It's ASMR glow and today I wanted to take you a little bit into my life <laughs> and as you can see there's my puppy here just right behind it's Astra. Astra. <laughs> She's sleeping very deeply so you'll have her in the background. <laughs> the poor thing. <laughs> I scared her. I was like she's um she's a rescue dog and she's not very used to well now it's been a year that we've had her, but she's still a little skittish sometimes, so uh, she has those reactions. But she is the softest and most marshmallow kind of puppy. <laughs> she's so cute. So she's here to stay with us today. And I have my... No latte. Hi, Astra. <laughs> She's saying hi. I have my little latte. And also, it's all like in the fall, in the fall spirit. to light a candle. Not too loud. <laughs> Gonna take this one. It's a um, snowflake cookie. Fun fact, I used to, this was the candle I used to put in my um, bedroom when I was in college. I was in law at the time and I had this in my bedroom all day. And I used to love it, and now, for some reason, getting older, I I don't like sweet candles as much. I like more mm, fresh, maybe a little bit oriental, but sweet is like getting to me now. <clears throat> but I still, um, just for old time's sake, I know this is one I can trust. can hear that, but okay. Here it is. All right. So I'll put this right by you. moisturize my hands and what we're gonna do today is um I I've had my <clears throat> my first book proofread which means that it's um t like someone has been correcting all the grammar and spelling you know like last minute mistake but I also asked for a feedback and her feedback was very different from all the others that I've had so far so I decided to um, take, in, take it into account and see what I can change from it and I always want, mm, you know, to better my skills in a way 
so I'm definitely taking that into account but also making sure that I keep the spirit of my book, you know, because at the end of the day, if you take um, feedback from everyone, everyone has different opinions. One book can be very liked by some people and then very disliked by other people, so I have to make sure that in the end, it still feels like me and it's my story and um, so I can't take everything that I'm getting, but I'm going to take um, whatever I can and make this better and I'm thinking of a fall 2024 release, which I know sounds far away, but um, my artist, I have a cover artist, Wayne Wu, <laughs> he's amazing, and he's going to take a bit of time to do it because he has a lot of work, so um, basically, as long as I don't have the cover, there's not much I can do apart from preparing for everything, so I'm just going to take the time to make sure that everything, you know, I better myself and recently I've been very into Tolkien's world because originally he's the one who inspired me, of course but mm, now I've had very tough days in the past few weeks and I find that his world is a comforting one and so I delved, delved, I delved deeper into his world and I, as an author, it's so impressive because I could never have a mind like that but I, it's just so inspiring so I'm just doing a lot of research, I bought a lot of books that are coming um, in the next few days from him, <laughs> pretty much half of his books, so <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, the best thing you can do as an author is just read other people, so I'm reading John Quine too so we're gonna do that, we're gonna do like, I'm gonna correct my story today read and I just want you to stay with me and if you want to have this in the background, I would love that and I feel like you're kind of working with me at the same time, so uh, yeah, this is where we're at right now, but I'm really excited about things to come it's just, it's a lot of work and I'm very excited Alright, so let's start with um, correcting my story and you can have some, I get clicking sounds and things on my work sometimes, like write sometimes and I'm gonna have a lot of stuff going on. Alright, so I hope you have a good uh, time with me today. I might do some inaudible, so you might hear something. Um, so her feedback was not, uh, bad. It was, like, very different from anything else because I think she's a different kind of reader. Um, there's always, like, people who are more character-driven and then the people who are more plot-driven. And so each one is going to tell you something different. Um, so I just have to balance that, which is tricky, but I, I think I can do this. Uh, but she, I think she said that overall, like once she really got into the story, eventually she got exactly what I wanted from my character, which is very nice for me. Um, but she had some trouble, which I can't tell you right now. So we're gonna work on that. Um, all right.
you know, sometimes I think that if someone releases, like, writings that I did about, like, you know, little notes about my story, no one could ever read it because my writing is so bad. <laughs> my, um, yeah, my, the font. <laughs> I'll see. Tell me in the comments uh, what you're doing at the same time if you're listening to this. I'm, sometimes I don't yet have a Tolkien book at hand, but what I've been doing these days is um, listening to the audiobook uh, uh, narrated by Andy Serkis, which is insane. Um, 
but also sometimes looking at snippets of his writing because obviously it's a little hard because I am fluent but I I think I read mostly growing up French fantasy or French books so I do have a lot of French vocab but in English, I've been fluent in more common terms, if that makes sense, or, or academic terms in university. But I've never been too familiar with like a high, higher language. It's hard. Like, I mean, I understand higher language. It's just that it's not common enough for me. I didn't read enough fantasy in English as of now to adopt the higher language. So I'm trying to immerse myself a little bit more into that. And you're going to ask maybe why didn't you write in French? It's weird, but because I haven't been speaking French in 10 years, like, um, my day-to-day -day life it comes hard, like it's more difficult for me to write in in french because it's like it doesn't come as easy as english english i speak day to day so it's just it flows more easily for me um in french is i would have to look for my words every time but my vocab is i think more fancier in French, I think, but like, uh, I can build vocab in English, that's okay, it's just that I don't, I didn't want to struggle like on every, you know, expression and stuff and so that was my decision, it's easier for me to write in English. Um, there you go. But that's okay, like, I'm learning and it is possible that throughout my series the, you know, the writing is gonna get better and I think that's okay I can always like come back and rewrite the first one but I think it's also interesting to see like, you know, the evolution so um, I'm always of the mind that someone, you know there's always something you can do to get better at any scale that's why these editors are very useful for me because it also teaches me things in the language that I don't necessarily have to deal with day to day, you know.
hard also because you have to find the balance between like I could edit my story honestly for 20 years probably in order to get at you know the best thing I could but then like it's endless so you have to find the balance between you know like you have to at some point be like I need to put this to the rest and move on because someone could just spend really a long time just perfecting a story perfecting like writing and stuff but in the end can it really be perfect because it's just a matter of opinions really so that's why I love myself time and then when my cover artist is done it'll be done because I've, sp I've spent a already a long time not as long as a lot of people but some people spend 10 years on the story um, but I've been working on this for two years and a half three years so yeah I need to let it rest at some point um, and I love it the way it is it's just that I'm always like can I make it better for some type of people, you know? But if you cater to different types of people in the end, you lose the essence of the story. So it's it's really important to know when to let it go, I think. So that I did neither is my dad actually getting out of your eyes. You know, I, I haven't looked at book one in a few months and because I'm already starting on book two but um, sometimes I look at my writing and I'm like, did I write this? <laughs> I don't recognize but I feel like I'm reading a book that I haven't written myself It's very strange It's a, it's in a good in a good way. I don't want to feel like we're in a slightly different world now 
course, you know, I like, I like stories that are like in a world completely different from ours. So, yeah. Um, it's not nice being kicked out. <laughs> what did I do? Kicked. Oh my god, yeah, okay. So that, that's good. Okay, I'm like almost like her um, little notes that she made. I've also listened to um, N.K. Jemsen, her class and master class, her writing class. It's really, really interesting. I obviously don't, I think, agree with her on everything. Not that I disagree, it's just that I, some things that matter to her a lot don't matter as much to me. But, you know, that's the very different types of writers and storytellers and that's really good but like I took a lot from that class and I actually love her personality too um, but I always try to find you know there's also Neil Gaiman's um, class that I want to go through I wish Tolkien had a class <laughs> obviously but um I'm always trying to get better. I try to listen to YouTube videos of just people analyzing writing or stuff like that, or some people criticizing also some books so that I can understand. Uh, yeah, I'm studying a lot for this, but it's it's actually really fun. So that
do a lot of that. It, I think it, oh, that, that was baby. Um, I do a lot of, um, I'm just like straight up exposing my flaws, but I'm going through all of them, all of these things to correct them. So, um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a Frenchism of, I'm um, like, for example, I'll say her, uh, I don't know, her eyebrows shot up disconcerted <laughs> you know what i mean is my character is disconcerted but how i write it means that her eyebrows are disconcerted <laughs> i do a lot of that so she's pointing the, those out so i will correct them all but um maybe that will make you laugh if you catch one of them <laughs> one of the stray ones nice to read this because I didn't notice that before so <laughs> for example this example that she just noted is so for example this one that she <laughs> I had written middle-aged his short brown hair was not yet drowned in gray and she corrected she said technically the sentence means that his hair is middle-aged <laughs> so yeah she corrected it he was middle-aged so his short brown hair okay I'll make it maybe sound a little bit more a lot of Frenchism, <laughs> but I warned them beforehand, so that's okay. Subject. Okay. So, wait. Oh. What did I do?
know it. Now let's have some book sounds. I don't I still don't have a bookmark, so I really need one. I think it was a page. Meaning this for now, it's honestly great. I usually don't like multiple characters, like multiple, you know, when there's like a chapter for different characters. I usually don't like that. I like to follow one person and not be distracted and just like really get immersed in their story, which I know is kind of old school. I feel like there's not a lot of epic fantasy now with one person, um, but <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of... But I like, but this doesn't. This this is okay. This is okay. There's only three, so I guess that's still like manageable to me. Um, yeah, I like multiple point of views for uh, shows. I guess.
really useful to work like while filming because it um, it's like making me accountable in a way. <laughs> so 